myself away We can have wonderful services, amazing music and dancing and shouting. And, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, it, it's, it's pointless. You've got to have the indwelling of the Spirit of God. 2019, I took a team, a, young, a, young, a team of young people to Sri Lanka for a mission trip. And uh, we were with Brother Prince Matthias. He is the general superintendent of the work in, in Sri Lanka. He was telling us about one of the pastors one day who was started a, a missions, home missions work in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is predominantly Buddhist. In, in a, a very rural village somewhere, he felt the call to, to start the work. And I started to share the gospel, but the villagers around them were very antagonistic towards him and his family. And so what they did was they, they took some, some poison and they poisoned his well. The well, each, each home, majority of homes, has a well by which they get their drinking water from. They get their all, all their water supply from that well. And so they poisoned this well. And uh, his, the pastor's child came and told him that these people have done this to the well. So they went to the well. They could even smell the toxicity that came out of that well. He said, well, we don't have any other source of water. What, what are we going to do? So Pastor Prince... I got a phone call from this pastor. This pastor rang his superintendent and said, Pastor, what, what shall I do? What do you want me to do? And Brother Prince said, okay, well, let, let's just pray for now. Hung up the phone. An hour later, after praying and seeking God, God spoke to him. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, tell him to, to do what, what Elisha did when the, the, the water was poisoned in at that particular city that he went to. And put salt in the water. Remember I talked about salt the other week? Stay salty. Remember that? This is not the same. But so he did that. They, they took salt, threw it in the water. They, they, they linked hands. His whole family, the pastor and his family linked hands around the well. Began to pray. And as they prayed, they believed by faith. Took that water. And they drank. And nothing happened. The villagers were so amazed. They were looking and they were watching from the fence. There was a fence in their property and they were looking to see him, to see them drop dead from the poison of the water. Nothing happened. They carried on about their lives. But, but here, here's what happened. The wells of the other neighbors and villagers suddenly became poisoned. Suddenly it was toxic that they couldn't drink it. The only well in that village that was not polluted was the pastor's, the Christian's well. And eventually, despite all of their pride and resentment towards this Christian family, the entire village would line up and come to that house to drink from the well of this pastor. And he welcomed them. And to this day, there is an apostolic church in that village in rural Sri Lanka. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is with us. Whatever problem, whatever trial you got to face, whatever difficulty, you just, you just let the Spirit of God move. Give Him some room. Give Him space. Let God work in your life. He'll speak to you in the wee hours of the night, in your dreams, in the morning when you're at work. If you just close, turn off social media, turn off the television and say, God, here I am. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God, it's not just some, some program, some project. It's God Himself. Remember the persecution? Persecution has redemptive purpose. Whenever you go through trouble and you're living for God, God is doing it. There's a reason for it. That's the beauty about living for God. That even in your darkest days, even in the hardest times of life, there is something to be gained from the troubles that we face as believers. Come on, if you're going through a problem right now and you've been living for God, you're serving Him, I'm telling you, God is doing something in your life. He's producing growth. 
He doesn't want just you to be comfortable with that house or, or, or that the income and thank God for every blessing. Thank God for the money that God's given to us. But listen, what God is more interested in is making sure that your faith and that your spiritual character is developed. It's gross. Hallelujah. So if you're going through problems, if you're going through trial, remember that's God's vote of confidence to say, you can do it. You can make it. I've got something for you. Get James for us, will you? Here's what James says. He says, count it all joy. Go to verse, next verse. Count it all joy when you fall into various, diverse, variegated, many, many trials. Not just trials from family, not just trials from work, but all kinds of trials. He says, you got to count it as joy. We got to be happy. He said, well, I can't smile right now because I'm having a hard time. You know, this husband of mine, boy, he's, he's getting on my last nerves. But he said, count it all joy. Be happy when you're going through a hard time. Knowing, why well, watch this, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. That's what Sister Robin was talking about last week, about, about growth, spiritual growth. What God is trying to do is make, help us to grow. He doesn't want us to be spiritual babies all our lives. He doesn't want us to, to be in, in Christ when things are good and then out when things are bad. He wants us to go beyond the material and physical disposition in our lives. He wants us to be mature. He wants us to be adult men and women and say, God, I'm with you to the end. You don't have to give me everything that I want just for me to serve you. I don't have to have all of my dreams fulfilled for me to serve you. Lord, you are still good. You are still the way maker. No matter what I have in my life. Will you also walk away every time you go through problems? Is Jesus asking, are you going to walk away as well? You, we better turn around and say, Lord, no. Where can I go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Where am I going to go? Go back to the clubs? Go back to the pubs? Go back to the... Where, where am I going to go? I'll go, go make money. And, and so what? I have a nice house. And then when I'm dead, when I'm about to die, so what? No, you alone have the words of eternal life. Blind Bartimaeus was in town. He heard that Jesus of Nazareth was coming by. He had been blind his whole life. He cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus, thou son of David. And the crowd told him to be quiet. And the crowd told him to shut up. But what they didn't understand was that Bartimaeus had a need. And he knew that there was a God walking by who would be touched with the feeling of this infirmity. And so he cried all the louder. I'm reaching for people here. Your suit's on and your shirt's ironed. But your life's a mess. He's looking for you to cry. Have mercy on me. And if you'll cry, have mercy on me. Jesus will meet you. I don't care if you're going through your third divorce. I don't care if you got cancer screening tomorrow. I don't care if your mental health is in shambles. If you will cry out to Jesus. He's going to move in your life in the next few moments. Here's what we're going to do. If you are overwhelmed, broken, and in need of healing and a fresh touch from the Lord, I invite you to come to this altar right now and we are going to pray a prayer of faith. And God is going to heal you. And God is going to touch you. But you're going to have to get vulnerable. That's it, come, don't be ashamed. Saying, people, people may look at me. That's okay. Who cares? If they look at you, that's fine. They'll get to have a front row seat to your healing. That's about to happen in the next few moments. Jesus is about to have mercy on you. God is not cold towards you. God is not apathetic towards you. God understands you. He is touched by your feelings. He is touched by your infirmities. And also by His power and authority, He is here. I want you
want you to lift your hands to God right now. Don't bury, don't bury your face in the ground. I know we, if you're kneeling, that's fine. But I want you to lift your hands up to heaven. This is not the time for you to hide who you are. God wants to see it because he's here to help it. When I say in the name of Jesus, be healed. I don't know what all the needs are and I can't pray for everybody. But when I do, the presence of Jesus Christ is going to sweep over this room. And the authority and power that is in heaven is going to come into your body, going to come into your mind, and you're going to be infused with supernatural strength because you have a God who's got one hand on all power and authority and also has his hand on your heart and hand on your life, and he is in the middle of your mess. So if you're ready to receive from the Lord, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. And when I say in the name of Jesus, be healed. This band's going to begin to play and they're going to begin to sing with all of their might. And you're going to shout unto God. And we're going to see miracles happen in this room in the next few seconds. Are you ready to receive from the Lord right now? Are you ready to receive from the Lord right now? Jesus, we are here. In all of our humanity, we are families that are overwhelmed. We are young adults that don't know what life and our future has for us. We are people, Lord, with brokenness and frailty and yes, even some sin. And God, we are here before you and we hide no more. We play no religious games. We, like blind Bartimaeus, are here in your presence saying, Jesus! Have mercy on me. And Lord, I know that you are moved by sincerity. So I pray right now by the authority of the Word of God, by the blood that was shed on Calvary, and by the power of the name of Jesus, I speak healing into your mind, into your body, into your relationships. Right now, be healed. 